Ninja Shadow of Fatir is a 100% martial arts revenge story. In the first ninja, Casey trained in the art of ninjutsu, but he wasn't really the ninja. The story that picks up now in the second film is settled down with Namiko. Casey, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's very special for them to get together and have a little new life. They're married, he's expecting a baby. He's now the, the main sensei of the dojo where he grew up. And an incident happens which is gonna shatter his whole lifestyle. And it's gonna take him on this journey of revenge. I'm going after him. You cannot go. I don't have a choice, senpai. The scope of the movie takes us from Japan to Thailand, to the jungles of Burma, and back to Japan. He becomes a darker character, more brutal. We want to see JC go very dark and almost become an anti-hero and he does some things that uh, your average hero wouldn't do. Ninja Shadow of Fetir is finally a martial arts movie. Like in the old days, it's not an MMA movie, it's not in the ring, it's a pure retro martial arts movie with techniques that are super modern. It, it is really an homage. The fight sequence is the purest form of cinema, in my humble opinion, because all the elements of filmmaking come together. You've got the speed changes, the slow motion, you've got the editing of the fighting, you've got the smoke and mirrors of pretending to hit someone when you're not, but making it look like it hurts. It's a very technical side of filmmaking, so it's pure cinema. Most of the martial arts weapons that are in the movie are linked to old Japanese, either samurai sword, ninja sword, a kama. These are the typical weapons that you find in Japanese and sometimes Chinese martial arts. We were looking for something that was a little bit unique and different. We wanted something that would be a signature of a killer that would still be linked to a ninjutsu, a ninja, and that is the Manriki Kusari, and it is used, I think, really effective in the movie. We decided we were going to find real martial artists to do, do this movie, and we were going to do it the old-fashioned way with everything being real. When uh, Scott was fighting the Japanese dojo, I wanted to make it in one shot, not stopping the camera, not using wires, and do it continuously. I think doing action in the movies is a completely different sport. It's really, really difficult. That's why I love doing action so much. It's so complicated. I mean, there's so many things you have to do, and there's so many things that you can always get better at. It's a never-ending process, and it's fun. Some of the fighting techniques in this movie they are pretty complicated, and you need people that there's a lot of experience, both in martial arts and in screen fighting, to make it look good. After the first day, you're gonna wake up and your neck's killing you and you can't. Your legs are aching and you feel like death, but you've gotta get up in the crack of door and soldier on. Listen, making action films is not easy. It really is difficult. It's harder than you can even think it is. Trust me. Scott, just seeing what he can do is amazing and there's not too many non-Asians who can move like him. It was so easy to work with him. You know, it just makes you wanna the best you can. He's serious about his acting, about the character that he's creating. You need to return to the States before it's too late. You're telling me to run. I'm telling you to live. This is living. And he puts not 100%, but 1,000%. Yeah, I think this is my seventh film with Isaac. We know each other very well. I know what he expects of me, and he knows what I need to be able to get to a certain place as an actor. He's able to push me more than another director would. But I like that because that's how we get some, some really good stuff. Well, you know, it's great working with a director who really knows his craft. Isaac knows, I mean, he's a martial artist himself. Isaac's a seventh degree black belt, so everything is gonna be very realistic and very authentic in this film. He knows so much about martial arts, not only action for movies, but the real martial arts, Japanese karate, where it came from. He's just like an encyclopedia. He's showing sometimes what he wants, you know, oh, throw it more like this. You know, he, he knows about martial arts and action, so it's really easy to work with. Martial arts has been a big part of my life. I started training when I was 13 years old. I started with uh, judo and then karate. I also branched to Thai boxing a little bit, 
the same Krav Maga, still Judo, of course. You learn to appreciate and you see the common points between all martial arts. Remember, you have to control your emotions and not to let your emotions control you. He really knows how to pull the punches and he really knows how to work with his actors. Kane Kasugi, without doubt, is one of the best martial arts actors in the world. His rhythm and his timing and his distance is spot on and is probably better than anyone else. He's a wonderful martial artist. He moves amazingly, he does his own stunts, exactly like Scott. And he's a very, very good actor. You have lost control. I want to see like the old days, you know, like when Bruce Lee or Jack Chan would do their own things. You know, it's like amazing to watch. And it has this different feeling, and I think this movie has that. And unlike Ninja One, that was more in the comics world, this one is totally realistic. No wires in this movie. All the action, all of the martial arts action, is real. There's going to be some action that you've never seen before. Some moves. It's going to be action-packed, fun, fast. I think the audience will have a fun time watching it. You're going to get what it says on the tin. You're going to get ninja action. You're going to get some fantastic fights done by the best guys in the business. And you're just going to go on a, on a ride and enjoy yourself for an hour and 40 minutes. It's world to world martial arts. Everything is going to be very realistic. I think we have a great looking film. A real pleasure. It's going to be great. A man who seeks revenge should dig two graves. They're going to need a lot more than that. Hey, it's Lisa. Did you know that the first kung fu movie to break the $1 million mark was 1967's The one armed Swordsman? The role set off a series of one arm roles for the star Wayne knew he would appear in several sequels to The one armed Swordsman, as well as one arm Boxer and The Flying Guillotine. Now click here below to subscribe and remember to also tap the bell to always receive our videos in your feed.